Our next panel discussion is about data and sports, the winning partnerships for fans and brands. And uh, to take this discussion forward, I would like to invite our session chair, CEO for Zenith India, Jay Lala, to kindly join us on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Jay Lala, CEO, Zenith India. Welcome you, Jay. And joining us on this panel are esteemed panelists, Gaurav Nijhavan, Vice President, Marketing and Brand and Communication, Stash Finn. Please welcome our panelists with a round of warm applause, ladies and gentlemen. Shankar Ayer, Associate Director, Marketing, Perfetti Van Mele India. Welcome you. Please give it up for Snehil Gautam, CMO for Housing.com, PropTiger.com and Makan.com. Welcome Snehil. And Yannick Kolako, co-founder of FanCode. Our panel is set on stage, and now I would request our session chair, Jay, to kindly initiate the talk. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, really, really great to do do this session. And uh, when when this topic came to me, I thought like 45 minutes won't be enough. So. Uh, but we, we've got a, a great set of uh, panelists and uh, we'll, we'll hopefully have a very interesting session for all of you all. Uh, so on, on, on the topic uh, to, to, to kick off, uh, sports has been uh, quite, a, quite a game changer, not only in India, across the globe. And uh, when, it, when it comes to marketing, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a challenge in terms of when you look at content and when you look at sports, because sports evokes a lot more emotions, a lot more feelings. Uh, there, are, there are fanatics who, who sort of follow the game. And uh, given, given all these elements which sports brings in, uh, and then now uh, with, with the tech which, we've, uh, which is getting evolved and the data that gets produced, uh, it's, it's a great sort of combo to have. And today what we'll do is we'll, we'll just like, uh, try and uh, sort of you know garner as much information from these experts uh, so so to just start off first uh, I'll Gaurav I'll, I'll, I'll start with you uh, what's what's like just a top line view in terms of you know power of sports power of data uh, good evening uh, everyone so I, I'm very passionate about sports uh, and uh, hence I'm very excited to be a part of this uh, panel discussion as well so the topic uh, which is around uh, sports and uh, big data, I think um, if sports and big data ma get married to each other, it's truly engaging for the customer and it becomes uh, really uh, meaningful for the brand as well, right? And, and in fact, I was just thinking about it that um, you know, in, in the past, technology has been uh, really enabling and disrupting the way we see a lot of things. It, it could be around telecommunication, it could be around uh, uh, fintech, it could be around um, the way events have been happening, or even the sports uh, as well, right? So, so when I when I think about sports as well, and and and, and you know how uh, technology has really dry, dri driven sports is that um, sport has always been uh, whatever the finest technology was present in in any era, right? The the most innovative technology that was present. Sports was always part of it. So, for example, I, I when I was in school, right? I, I remember I used to go through print magazines uh, back then, uh, sports stars and and all, all of that, and and trying to figure out, you know, what is Sachin Tendulkar up to or Rahul Dravid up to. Then, uh, I mean, then broadcast channels came in, cable TV came in. So people were hooked on to whatever technology had to offer uh, from a perspective of uh, sports as well. Then, um, obviously. Uh, Cricket websites happened, and we were uh, clued on to you know analyzing what is happening in our favorite sports, be it cricket or even uh, football for that matter. Now there's a, there's a th theme of OTT players with with the advent of 4G and 5G technology. So hence you know it is but obvious that uh, you know technology will play a big role in sports as well, and in trying to figure out that how do we enjoy the most from a uh, sports perspective. Now the big data bit here, right? The big data um, is really something from a brand perspective. Something that will um, add really meaningful uh, uh, to a brand to understand what the customer is all about. Like, you know, if it gives a 360 degree overview about a customer. So just to give you an example, if some customer is a soccer freak and a Messi fan, 
can can a predictive modeling or the predictive uh, marketing uh, or big data tell us that you know is he likely to shop for a merchandise which is related to a soccer or you know um, uh, whether he might be looking at a, a football documentary also on a netflix right or would he be um, uh, looking for booking his tickets to qatar for world cup uh, that's going to happen right or no, is he looking for the best credit card offers or personal loan to actually be there in Qatar as well? So I think that for me, if from a 360 degree standpoint, if big data can tell us, uh, it'll be really truly meaningful for both the brand and engaging for the customer as well. Yeah. Uh, thanks, thanks, Gaurav. Uh, uh, Snehal, will, will, would you like to like sort of add on to this and specifically like, like the way Gaurav was saying, you know, that uh, Big data is important and uh, big sports and India spe especially uh, beyond cricket. You know, like when we think about sports in India, it's like generally said that it's all about cricket. But is right. there something beyond cricket? So, Jay, uh, the reality is uh, cricket is huge in India and it still remains very huge. Um, you take TRP data, ratings data or if you look at your core TG. And in most of the sector, it's true for most of the sectors. If you ask whether uh, your core TG is watching cricket or not, most of the time the answer is yes, right? And that's why the cricket is such a big business. Uh, I think the next big sports that is, that has uh, that that has been originated in India is kabaddi. Uh, if you look at ratings, uh, it's it's uh, again quite good, but compared to cricket, still small. Um, football and tennis still plays a very niche uh, sport so far in India. Uh, but if you ask me as an advertiser, how these sports, uh, you know, where will you put these sports as, as an advertiser? Cricket will always remain a very high impact, uh, you know, program for us. Uh, football, Wimbledon, tennis, uh, these are the niche areas niche programs uh, for some cohorts of our customers. Advertising on those programs makes lots lots of sense and uh, it doesn't require lots of money to advertise on that and ROI is much much uh, better in terms of in terms of you know getting to the to the right users, getting to the high intent users, getting to the HNI users. So those sports are still you know a sustenance, a high intent targeting uh, programs for us. And cricket, I think, uh, still India, very high impact uh, um, sports. No, thanks, thanks a lot. And uh, it's 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 quite interesting. And uh, Yannick, I would like your views on this. Is uh, with with this whole uh, data becoming affordable, uh, and and like OTTs uh, across across genres everywhere, uh, seeing seeing a quite a uh, bit of a boom. Uh, do you think uh, sports uh, is going to move towards OTT and become like a OTT will become a broadcast medium? Yeah, I think it's um, it already is, right? I think in terms of uh, if you actually look at uh, live sports, I think one of the most prominent, fastest growing mediums of for broadcast is uh, is digital right now, and I think it does two two very important things. You know, you spoke a lot about, I mean, which is the uh, the fundamental reason why sports is so Im so so much more important to marketers than any you know other content like you know cat videos or other YouTube which are low engagement videos, is that the user normally has affiliation. They want a player to win. They want a team to win. They want you know a player to do well, and because of that, a user is normally or the viewer is very engaged into that. So the ability to actually get on that. So when you start looking at digital, I think what the transfer of sports consumption from television to digital does it allows you from a user it allows you to be able to watch what you want whenever you want you don't you're not restricted by linear uh, in linear television and you know in the old broadcast days if you had five channels at one point of time you could only show five sports events now you can show i mean a fan code we show at some point of time about 25 sports events at the same time so you're able to, as a user, you're able to choose what you want. So I think that really has added a lot of advantage to sports users, uh, to sports fans. And I think the other big thing which is essentially moving the migration of consumption from traditional broadcast to digital is that, honestly, sports consumption or sports fans want more than a, they're more than passive viewers, right? It's not just about sitting back and watching a game. 
It's about being able to talk to friends, uh, whether it's virtually or uh, in, real, in real life. It's about being able to interact with stats. It's about choosing. It, it can be a lot more immersive and digital. And if you compare where eSports is as an experience of users to uh, interacting with the game, sports is way behind. And there's so much of things that you can actually learn from. And you know, it's something that we're doing even uh, in this India to our West Indies, which is on fan code, we're trying to actually do a lot more in a sense, give the power of the actual experience to the user, to the fan, which is the fan can choose when they want to watch a highlight. The fan can choose when they want to access stats while the game is going on. The fan can choose who they want to listen to in commentary. And I think that's going to push more migration, more migration in a sense that users are going to move to digital because some of the services that digital can give you in watching sport are just not possible to give in a traditional linear form. And, and as and when you require it. Yeah. Yeah, at, 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 uh, very interesting. And uh, Shankar, I would, I would like your views on this, uh, given that you, know, you, you have a host of interesting brands and even more interesting creatives. Uh, like how, how, how does this uh, play out in your scheme of things? Yeah, thank you, Jay. So, with the kind of sector I come in is FMCG marketing and of course food marketing as well. So for us, uh, physical availability is important, but more so is mental availability. And I think that's where digital, big data, they come in versus TV, wherein we are able to capture you know, the immersive experience that the consumer has when he consumes sports, watching on mobile, watching on you know digital. So for us, it's very clear uh, that whenever uh, we do any advertisement, uh, it's a combination of TV plus digital. And that is where OTT and VOD as a platform is predominant for us. So the key aspect is youth is again a big segment for us. So in order to capture this 18 to 24, 18 to 30 year olds, the best part is to go on digital, the right platforms. So be it a Disney Hotstar or a YouTube, uh, any sports streaming website, for example. And to us, what it has done is given us that mental availability, which otherwise on TV, uh, with maybe, you know, there is a measurement with sample size, etc. Here you have measurement which is very clear, you can measure BLS, there is data available, there is targeting that you can do, very segmented. Plus, and you also mentioned the kind of creatives that we do. So our brands are about fun, about playability. And uh, we recently did some great creatives with say a tennis ball shaped cup. What we did is we advertised it during the IPL. Uh, interestingly, because we made cohorts of consumers who liked as well as tennis, for example, in areas, in geographies when we had launched it. So this kind of segmenting, this kind of profiling, I think that otherwise couldn't have happened. And also the kind of creatives that you do. On digital, when you go, uh, it gives you that uh, you know, opportunity to do shorter creatives, 10 seconders, 15 seconders, because you know that's the kind of attention span people have. And they are positively disposed as well because you make creatives which render itself well to the kind of sports that you target. So I think for us it's very important and over the period of years, I think the last two or three years, what we've seen is a digital through sports marketing give us uh, incrementality in reach, uh, re reaching the right audience of course and in the right geographies. So for us it's a great medium and I'm sure we'll keep continuing to invest in it as well. Oh, great, very, very interesting. Uh, moving, moving a little more closer to to the to the data part. Uh, how, how, what kind of role? Okay, and Gaurav, like I would really like your views on this one. Uh, given the industry you come from, data analytics to micro target your consumers, micro target mar markets. Uh, just what, so what so this, is, this is a very interesting um, uh, take on this, and you know this also takes me back to my. Um, not just BFSI, but uh, you know uh, FMCG days as well, right? Wherein, um, whenever there was a new product launch or a brand launch, uh, we used to call it like you know television will be giving air cover to the salespeople, right? And we'll do BTL activities that will be like the military on ground, you know, merchandise. We'll do visibility and all that. What was missing was the the surgical strike, like the precision targeting, right? Which I think OTT and with all these data analytics, uh, uh, you know, tools ha ha are going to bring in, like the precise targeting of what a person wants, uh, you know, because now people are also used to on-demand content, right? So they need it when they want, wherever they want. They want it on the go, 
as well. So, so that's where the precise targeting uh, play, plays uh, around as well. And I also feel that uh, there is a need for um, you know, data hub centers, so especially in OTT players. And right now, I think it's happening as well, wherein you do programmatic buying. Uh, and and you know, there, I have my first party data like from a fintech perspective or any other uh, brand's perspective as well. Is it, I am, would, would I be able to um, you know, uh, uh, reach out to my customer segment in the most relevant way in a programmatic way, and then can, can OTT players or you know the programmatic buying or this data centers tell me that what kind of frequency is required to reach uh, a, a person you know in the re most relevant way, what time of the day, or you know what kind of locations would give me the best uh, output uh, from a performance standpoint, and you know reduce my CAC as well. So I think these are the some of the innovations that from a media or a digital marketing uh, data standpoint will be really helpful. Uh, Snehil, what is what is your viewpoint on this? Given that you know you're you're in a industry which which like you know you're marketing properties and there'll be high end properties, middle low, and and how how does this play a role uh, data analytics in your scheme of things? So you know uh, for us it's extremely important because we are a platform uh, where users come online they you know they come to buy, sell or rent properties, so. Um, for us as a platform, we profile our users, you know, at a very minute level because we know what the user is doing on our platform, whether they are looking at one CR plus property, they are looking at 50 lakh properties. And, you know, after that, we have also mapped their consumption pattern. Uh, and it's very interesting because before COVID, my answer would have been very different than what it is right now. And I'm sure, I'm sure Fancode team will be very happy with the new trend. Uh, but earlier, you know, whenever we used to sit down and do our media planning, then it was a TV first uh, media marketing uh, plan that we used to do, uh, especially for sports. Because across the cohorts, whether it was, uh, you know, a, a, a user segment looking for a luxury property, a user segment looking for, uh, you know, mid value property, or user segment looking for a you know, less than 50 lakh uh, property, everyone was on television. Now, after, and that's the reason, you know, while COVID extremely, deadly, extremely bad for human race, few things it has, there was few positives out of it as well. There, there were cohorts of people with whom we were struggling to get them online in tier two, tier three cities. If you look at our growth numbers from tier two, tier three cities, it has significantly gone up. And we didn't do anything. It's all because the eco ecosystem become, became better. Similarly, if you look at the con uh, cricket consumption, sports consumption across the cohorts, our top player segment has completely moved out of television now. They are, on, they are watching sports on OTT platforms. Um, and it has resulted, uh, you know, uh, in shifting lots of money towards OTTs and that shift will keep happening. We are seeing rental audience completely, you know, cutting the cord of television. They are completely on OTTs. They are watching, uh, you know, I IPL on OTT platforms, on mobile, on connected TVs. And that's the reason that, you know, we started our, uh, uh, media budgeting with 70-30 in four years back and this year we have planned 70-30 again but 70 towards digital which is a big shift and, and uh, what what would that be for like if I if I may ask Shankar what would it be for Perfetti 70-30 digital yeah so I think I was just thinking the same piece as well so when we started before COVID we would be like 90-10 uh, in favor of TV, but we are moving now a 60-40 for our youth brands, still in favor of TV. But I think this is set to change in the times to come. Uh, I'm sure most of you have seen the recent auction as well uh, of IPL, of course, where you did see that people trying to play bids for digital rights is getting as close to, say, 80% of what the TV rights are. This just shows that what the next five years has in store. And I think what has also happened, as rightly said by Snehal, is tier two and tier three. That always used to be our uh, benchmarks to you know, go on TV. Because the kind of product that we are in is mass. 
you need to create an impact and cricket as you know someone said earlier on the panel as well you could make that impact on tv straight away and that is where you used to look at those spots now with digital being there and the sports being there you can actually say in an india pakistan match you want to be present when india is batting because that's when you know most people would watch it you would want to be in the last 10 overs you could do this in the old days if you go on tv your spot buys are done even if it's uh, you know uh, pre aligned as well but then you get a fixed duration and you know a fixed spot as well here you can change that i think that is the kind of flexibility we are loving with digital as well and if at all you think the india pakistan match is a no consequence match with neither of the teams reaching anywhere you can pull back as well so i think that is something digital is giving us the joys of as well so 60 40 is i think here to stay probably as we go along some of our media plans and during covid and just when we got out of it what we also did was we only did digital and as an experiment it worked as well so we did targeted promotional offerings for certain geographies and we said we'll only go digital so this has really helped us and gorav what is it for you 100% we're all digital we're all digital right fintech i mean if we don't go digital who will go digital right but i also feel you know uh, the, the the power or the impact of television is also from a credibility perspective as far as i i mean you know in my opinion goes because i mean we've seen like we we talk about cac we talk about uh, you know impact measuring real time and all of that but having said that it's still it's still the credibility that television can offer or the reach in in one go it can offer it's still not there like it, at least like maybe from a urban perspective uh, you know everybody uh, has smartphones and all of that uh, and tier 3 three or four cities it's changing as well but still you know there are other uh, media network like radio is is essential right if 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 uh, uh, if online education was an issue for a village uh, like village kids they couldn't um, you know um, uh, study properly during the online education time uh, in, because of the lack of smartphone it's too much to ask for you know being only digital uh, from that regard to reach that tg if you have that tg as well right no oh, interesting and uh, yanik uh, what what like while we we spoken to the marketers you know and and their point of view in terms of how it is but what about the fans you know how do you how do you engage with the fans how do you like as as a as a content provider as a platform uh, using data or otherwise like what's what's your view about that how do you engage with them yeah i think it's it's what i was saying earlier right in a sense that i think um you know if you look at traditional broadcast and even if you think about we've been watching cricket and cricket is most in terms of how a, a broad it's all storytelling right it's all about and it's what all these guys know really well uh it's all about a producer saying okay we are 10 for 2 now the story is around who's the next batsman what's your bench strength you know what's your strength at what do you bat to is the pitch turning so it's all building the story with statistics with um you know win loss probability a whole lot of things so the engagement was always saying i'm trying to keep this person or keep my consumers engaged through the storytelling but i was telling that story the same story for everyone so whether you were sitting back and watching from first with the first ball to the last or whether you came in to watch for five overs or whether you came in uh, as as gaurav said to watch the last five overs it's the same story which essentially think about watching a movie right and you're coming at different places and it's exactly the same story that you're telling now digital one of the most important things that data can do in immersive um, technologies like digital is to be able to create customized stories for when you come in and pro- giving some of that experience giving that control of that experience to a fan and using digital to be able to do that is really the path to that so a fan can come in at you know in the last two overs and get a quick recap of every single highlight during the break between 19th and 20th or t20 get up to date watch the last over and move on or as a fan who's sitting from over one can watch the full story as it goes someone who comes in in over 5 and everything if you especially in younger your audiences the the attention span as we all know is much smaller you have to be able to keep users engaged on that and i think data providing data at various pieces is really really good and also providing data in a in a fun format right and using wagon wheels manhattan's comparative win probability um you know at some point you know uh, uh you know comparisons from now to 10 years ago things like that so i think using that using data to tell stories which are personalized to individuals and give them control of it is essentially what we're trying to build got it got it. very 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 interesting and i i'm sure like as marketers we'll be able to like really really capitalize on 
you know, all these uh, enhancements which are happening on the game. Uh, when, when, when we talk about sports, it's, it's usually like, you know, we, we think that it's youth, it's, it's very male focused, but uh, like a large part of our addicts is focused towards uh, the, win the women. And, uh, and, and that's where, again, uh, Shankar, I would have like a viewpoint in terms of what role like sports, women, uh, and, and from a marketer's standpoint, like when you are looking at brands which are targeting uh, women, how would you portray with sports? How do you work around with sports? Thanks, Jay. I think it's an interesting question. So typically what we've seen is, uh, and in our categories where we have, say, gums, for example, it's predominantly towards men. The consumption is 70-30 in favor of men. And we've typically in the past looked at, uh, you know, programs that, you know, women like or we want to target them with content which they would appreciate as well. But I think when it comes to sports, uh, the reality is that as on date as well, the uh, viewership from women is less. But what we have tracked a sweet spot is uh, if we are present in some of those key uh, games, uh, and I'm talking cricket again because that becomes big impact, and again going back to an India-Pakistan kind of a match where it's the whole family who watches together. So if there is a new launch that is there, uh, and if it's on Alpen Libe, for example, which is a family brand, here we know for a fact that the entire family is viewing. And here uh, a mum is important for us because a mum is a gatekeeper at the end of the day for kids, especially in terms of consumption for sugar. Uh, so for us, it's important to be present there because then you have the full family, there is co-viewing that is happening. Uh, so on TV, we've taken this approach. On digital, I would say, to be fair, we are slightly behind on this because we've not cracked the code yet. Uh, but yes, uh, again, at the end of the day, uh, we have seen there is some spike in consumption from women as well, because cricket is some sport they take uh, affection to. Uh, but this is, I think, work in progress. And in the times to come, I think this is where we can look as an opportunity as well. Got it, got it. And uh, Yannick, again, uh, coming back to you on this, like, uh, how, how would you, as a platform owner, uh, look, at, look at the women audience? Like, how would you try and bring in more women uh, to watch the sport? So, I think this is a little more, um, I think this needs to be a little macro, right? As a platform, you can do whatever you want, but you have to, I think, the fundamental change in getting more women to watch sport, get more women to play a sport, which is really important. You know, uh, we keep talking about building a sporting powerhouse. Getting women to be performing and playing also is really important. I think that fundamentally, we have to make more women superstars, right? Young girls, I mean, I have a seven-year-old daughter. She actually started, like she plays cricket, or she, she enjoys cricket, not because of Virat Kohli, because of Jem Jemima Rodriguez, right, who we used to actually start showing on fan court on the 100 and stuff like that. So I think it's really important to not just to promote women cricket. I mean, this India a women's tour of Sri Lanka, which just happened, no broadcaster wanted to even broadcast, which is ridiculous. I mean, we had to actually go and set up cameras to be able to show it uh, to audiences in India. And I think that investment in terms of actually, and I think this is for everyone, right? broadcasters, marketers, everyone, I think the investment into women's sport is the most important. Because that, it's not going to change overnight. That is going to set the next generation of you know, young girls who are actually going to start following sport because you'll build role models. They're not all going to be superstars, but they have role models. It's like how all of us grew up you know, watching cricket, not because we were great cricket players, but because we grew up seeing male cricket superstars. And I think building those role models, it's happened in badminton, it's happened in some way in tennis, building those role models uh, as a as a broadcaster, as a distributor of content to make sure that we are able to you know put money behind not just showing the content to users but also being able to market it and that's I think really important and it will take time uh, but uh, you know as Sh uh, Shankar said it will take time but it's something that has to be invested in uh, in, in that sense. Sure, Gaurav, you would like to add something? Yeah, I have a point here because you know we also faced a similar challenge uh, when uh, we were launching a live boundless platform for women. Okay, because in, even in uh, fintech industry or cards industry, right, it is traditionally you know male who uh, dominate from a financial aspect perspective. So I, I feel that you know it's 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 a very uh, it's a challenge for the marketeers to make things cool as well, right? So for example, when we launched that platform, uh, we showed a woman uh, wanting to take up golfing while everybody around her was judging her that you know you you want to hit up. A, a ball just hit it with a, your brother's bat, 
right? So when you, you know, when you tweak things around, when you, when you make them realize that they don't have to listen to inappropriate things when it comes to taking up sports or things like these, that's where we'll also see a lot more women coming in, right? And, 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 and that's, that's, I think that's, if we make sports really cool and, and give them what they want, uh, maybe if it's from the backstory perspective or like, you know, taking up sports very seriously as well, communicating that in a much effective way, that will really help. Got it, got it. Uh, with, with, with sports being so, so much about passion and, uh, you know, what, what it can do for a brand uh, and at the same time data, you know, there's a, there's a combo of both of them which is extremely lethal. Uh, giving personalization angle to that, what I would want is like, you know, each of your views on this. In terms of, just imagine that, you know, there is, there is personalization at scale possible. Uh, how would you leverage it, like, you know, given the, the sector you're in or the brands you're handling with, and with some example, you know, which might be futuristic, but will will make it really interesting. So, Gaurav, if you would like sure. to start with. So, so, so now this reminds me of, uh, you know, what I was trying in my BFSI, uh, uh, one of my BFSI brands that I worked with. Uh, and it, this was at the peak of demonetization, wherein go digital was, you know, the key thing that, you know, let's go digital and all of that. We, we realize that it's a behavior, right? So a behavior is a person would w book a Uber cab and pay digitally, but when it comes to buying groceries, the person will not, will, will choose cash, right? So I think data here, like even from a sports OTT standpoint as well, right? So if, if there is a sort of a, a lot of partnership between an e-commerce player and the OTT player, wherein you know, you know that this person is more likely to buy a certain product or a brand wherein you, know, you can pitch the right product at the right time with the right context as well. That is the personalization that will be very meaningful for um, both brand and the consumer. And Shankar, what's your view on? Yeah, so the kind of space we are in, for us it's very important to make the brand meaningful. And meaningful, I split it into two parts. One is something that meets the need, relevant. The other is, uh, again, uh, from an impact perspective as well. And how does it link from an affinity perspective to the consumer? So, and I can give you some historic examples. So, Center Fresh as a brand was built in the 1996 World Cup. People came to know the brand because we sponsored it. And at that time, I think we took the punt, we took a gut call. And as, as I say, many of these sports calls are gut calls. And at that time, not much data. We wanted to create an impact. We went with it. Something which I think uh, women in sports has to be, uh, you know, that route as well. But coming back to this specific question of yours, when in terms of personalization, what we can do is, uh, you know, go at a micro level and go at geographies. And so if I have a creative, right now it's more a national creative that I make, I could go regional. I could cut that creative with characters uncast which are localized. I could run that in specific geographies. I could create scale out of it which right now on TV, I can't. I can only dub it and play it in, say, a certain part of the country. But here, a contextual is key. Again, relevance is key. And hence, the cast, the story, and the way the story is told can be cut regionally as well. That is something I think in the future is something we should capitalize on. And uh, with kind of scale digital will get, it will be good from an, uh, the return on investment perspective as well, because TV, again, CPMs are lower, digital CPMs are higher, but when you see the return on investment on the marketing spends, I think digital will score. And, and probably we'll see more and more interesting creatives uh, <laughs> catered personally to the consumer. Yeah. Uh, Snehal, your views on, on, on personalization. So, uh, you know, for us again, it's extremely important to personalize uh, someone who is looking at a uh, two crore property, if you show them 25 lakh, <laughs> you might hurt his or her ego, um, <laughs> uninstall the app. So, you know, for us, it's extremely important and we do it more from the performance side of the marketing. But, you know, I, I, I'm, I've, we are working on something, you know, too early to talk about it, but Take an example of Zomato, what it did with personali personalization, uh, especially with the branding. Uh, what they did was uh, uh, the, the creative was changed basis the location of the person uh, on YouTube. 
and I think it was really, really well done. Um, and we we are trying to do something very similar because uh, you know someone who is living in Mumbai wants to buy a uh, home in Mumbai, and if we can talk about the locality, uh, we can talk about the kind of property he or she is looking in from the branding point of view, not from the performance point of view, it will create lots of impact. So uh, for me, personalization will has been limited to performance marketing so far. It will slowly and gradually move into brand marketing as well on digital and digital will be the space where it will change. I think where it will make more sense is when OTTs also, you know, start uh, opening up as far as personalization is concerned because we have, it has been so far restricted with, with uh, you know, too much of customization. So I believe, you know, once OTT platforms becomes, you know, more open, they give more targeting, uh, uh, you know, ideas, uh, the brand becomes more, uh, you know, um, uh, creative about, uh, uh, about customization on the creative front. Uh, you will see uh, personalization happening on the brand marketing uh, piece as well. Got it. And and uh, Yannick, uh, from a from a again from a viewer standpoint, from a fan standpoint, uh, like how how would you like you know sort of envisage this, or what is what is in store for us uh, in the near future? Yeah, I think uh, you know Stan was completely right in a sense that customization of experiences is an extremely important part of, especially because users have so much choice. Right? They don't have time to even, even the basic product that we have, being able to get uh, a football user to be able to see football information that's relevant to them as opposed to a cricket fan, it's really important to build that personalization. And I think when you start thinking about as a technology platform, right, you start thinking about raising the level of a consumer's experience that's when I think all this kind of sits together. You know, Gaurav had this great um, example of talking about content, merchandise, and in, in a sports scenario, and payments, right? So if you actually were to think about it and you say, okay, um, Rohit Sharma, Virat Kohli is batting and he's made his whatever 70th, which he's chasing for century for the last two years, but he's made his 70th century. I know that uh, Jay is a massive Virat fan. Uh, I know that uh, you have a card which is uh, a stash win card, right? And it's all linked into. While you're watching the game, when he makes that 100, now's the chance for me to actually put in, uh, you know, during the break, an overlay on it, only for you, saying 30% off on Virat Kohli's jersey from Fan Code Shop. Click on it, your card gets directly linked to it, and you get that, your address, everything is in, it gets delivered the next day to you. Now that is elevating your experience in the moment. When you talk about moment marketing, this is not just marketing to you at the right time, but it's also as a user giving you a tremendous amount of value. Now you can't do that with one crore houses, but, uh, but it's still, it's, it's I think the entire experience of how you start doing that, I think that's something that's really going to be, uh, help you ele elevate ex user experiences through personalization, both from uh, a marketer's perspective as well as from a consumer who's actually gonna see value in the service. Oh, great, great. I, I, I think uh, we, we are in uh, an interesting time and uh, our, our experience like from ways of watching on Doordarshan to what it is going to be now is, is, is going to be a real game changer. Uh, so now I'm going to put you guys on a spot. Okay? And uh, so what I would want to like, you know, as marketer and you all are going to be spending big bucks, uh, you have data on one side. Okay, where you know you could do your analytics and you could make a decision, and you have sports on the other side, which is very passion oriented, which is which is good. What where would you tilt your scale towards? Like today we have the benefit, or we are getting the benefit in future of both. But if you had to choose between one, uh, Gaurav, what would you go for? <laughs> <laughs> so as a fintech player, obviously you know data is, or you know the analytic ability is going to be the most important for me. But what sports is also doing is making things so engaging for the customer because the person, he wants more, more alone together sort of a phenomena, right? The person might be alone watching something on OTT player, but he's still, or he or she is still with his or her friends on you know, the OTT platform interacting amongst each other. So it is the, the creative challenge basically that you know, when somebody's enjoying the sports and analyzing how 
your how, what kind of data or whatever analysis, like the way we spoke, can actually make the brand fit in very seamlessly. I think I, I'll put it in that sense. Okay, playing it safe. Uh, <laughs> Shankar, what would you do? Yeah, for I think I mentioned before as well, in FMCG categories where you have to be top of mind and mental availability is important. For me, sports will be big. Uh, again, to create that impact, uh, to create associations which are meaningful, uh, playability is an important part for our business. And I think that's where the youth and the kids uh, who consume sports on, say, digital will be relevant for us. And hence, sports is key for us. So, uh, individually, I would choose sports, <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, you know, <laughs> we have shareholders, we have lots of stakeholders, and I have bosses as well. <laughs> CAC, so, you have CAC as well. Yeah, I have CAC as well. So, you know, uh, for me, I will follow the consumers. You know, I will let the consumers decide uh, if they are passionate about sports. I will have to be passionate about sports. If they are not passionate about any sports, as an advertiser, I can't make them passionate about sports. It's not my job. I just need to follow the consumer. So my answer will be, I'll let the consumers choose and I'll follow the consumers. Good, being diplomatic. Uh, Yannick, how would you want to sell to these guys? Like, given that you're from a uh, platform which is, which is all about sports, what's no. your... I, I, you know, and, and, and this is where I think that um, this entire, I, I think if you get how sports is different from every, every other piece of content, I think that's the most important thing. I think the one thing that we're trying to do, and I, I genuinely believe that, and I've been on the other side also of the brand side, right, that the amount of user information and targeting that a digital platform can give you and doesn't, is I think sometimes criminal, right? And I think it's, it's done for various reasons, uh, for various reasons, and, and there are various ways you can anonymize, um, anonymize it even within the current legal framework. Um, television always had that challenge, right? Because television relied on this third party data, which honestly it had 20,000 people representing 150 million. But you have that data here, so the, to be able to do that, I actually believe that marketers will pay premiums for specific use cases. So I think there's sometimes a fear that if I start giving out this data, you know, I won't get sales to some, I, you know, all of this eventually, uh, the, the marketer if, if has to be able to see ROI. And if you are able to use that to deliver better user experiences to whatever extent possible in, in uh, I, I think that's, that's just the most important thing that you can do. And sports, the key difference as everyone knows, right, is engagement sports is that, the the main thing that has people hooked on to sport is uncertainty of outcomes right the fact that from ball one to the most to the end of the end of the game you don't know who's going to win who's going to lose and that's what keeps that level of engagement in oh, it's 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 interesting because a uh, lot of lot of times uh, we we come to this conclusion that is india a, a cricket loving nation or is it a india winning nation you know because when when india doesn't win the view yeah yeah ipl has ipl has definitely sort of changed that so uh, that's that's what all we have uh, is there any questions anything oh my god okay <laughs> thank you so much for the opportunity um, i have one clarification for your last question uh, from the panelists was for wonderful information shared and was complimentary my question is that when you talk of data and sports and you said yes, consumer or customer vis a -vis data, what my understanding is that all that AI ML can give is actually that passion converted to data. I mean, where does AI and ML get its <laughs> database from? So big data is all about that. So I think it ultimately will go to the customer. Kindly clarify if I have right in understanding or not, because I am not a tech person. No, I, I, and then I, two small questions. Sure. I think I'll uh, do it in one go. So the second question is about a very small question, which is you mentioned that the next in queue is football and tennis and all. But I think two sports, both men's and women's, you know, badminton, right, and hockey. India has been doing exceptionally well. So what would be your prediction in terms of the Indian consumer getting interested in those? And both, men and women, both are doing very well. The third one is about the Edgbaston test, sir, which is due in two days' time. Is there any way 
and now I am going to the other side, not the consumer customer. Is there any way from all the data that we have on cricket to predict, given the you know circumstances that first time Bumrah will be leading, Rohit and Rahul will be missing out, and Kohli scored 200 runs in the last Edgbaston test and I was there in the stadium throughout 2018 test. So is there any way to predict cricket results and what would be the impact, expected impact on the consumers as well as the bookies? You know, more of match fixing, more of spot fixing and what not, you know. So what would be your prediction on those? So these are my three thoughts. Thank you very much for the opportunity. <laughs> thanks, thanks. So I'll, 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 I'll just uh, like sort of summarize your question and uh, the third one, I, I, I don't know what to do about <laughs> but no, But uh, there is a trick in the third one. He hasn't factored the English weather yet in the third <laughs> one. Uh, by, by any chance, are you investing on Dream 11? Like, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a tech guy, so I don't know about these things. I'm just learning. No, so, uh, one, yeah. so uh, one interesting question he had was, uh, like, which is the next big sport? Uh, and I think I would like to throw Kabaddi also into the ring. Uh, but given all this, uh, what's, what's the viewpoint any of you all would like to share? I think for this year, definitely uh, football will uh, make a comeback or like not a comeback. It will just be uh, high on volume because of the Qatar uh, World Cup that's going to happen in 2022. I think OTT will go big on that sports uh, definitely. And I think India is also qualified for Asian Cup. Uh, for the first time they've beaten... Uh, um, Hong Kong and teams like those as well. So I, I, I would, I, and, and, and there, is, there is like a lot of Gen Z and you know those kind of fan following are growing as well. So uh, I think I, I would say football at least for the next one year. Yeah. To me, if I were to think of, I think badminton scores higher. Uh, of course, it also depends on what kind of TG you want to go to. So if I were to look at say a Gen Z, urban uh, and 18 to 24, I would go badminton. But if I want to go slightly, you know, tier two, tier three cities, I think Kabaddi scores uh, decently well there, uh, and I think they've packaged it well as well. So I would split it basis the consumer uh, on what he or she chooses, and I think basis what my brand proposition is as well. Good. Yeah. So uh, for me, um, uh, Kabaddi obviously uh, is getting bigger. Uh, Reach-wise, I think it's getting bigger every year. Uh, but if you if you ask me where I will put my bucks, I'll put on badminton, and and the reason is you know because we have started to make stars in badminton, and that's just the beginning. You will see lots of stars being crea created in badminton going ahead. That's that's the feeling that I get. Obviously, it's very difficult to predict the future, but uh, I think badminton slowly and gradually next ten years it will become a very big sports here. Got it. Uh, and, and the other question which he had raised was uh, in terms of uh, data, but that's, that's something which we spoke about. Uh, but any viewpoint, anything, uh, anybody would want to add on to that? No, I think he, you, you were bang on. I mean, uh, that's exactly what I meant when I said uh, I will choose the consumers because consumer data will tell me what the consumer is choosing. And if the data tells me consumer is choosing sports, I'll go and choose sports. So I think uh, you were right uh, on the money. And, and I'll just add one more thing, right? So data can tell you a lot of things, uh, I'm, you know, coming out loud, but it's really the insights, you know, uh, the, what you make use of it, the unspoken truth that nobody is actually talking about. And, and it's a creative challenge. So if you're able to connect with people in a very creative way, in this case, you know, sports fans, I mean, what, you could have data paralysis, analysis paralysis, but you know, if you don't connect, have a, connect with the right chord, you'll not never get there. Yeah. Sure. And I, I think somebody had one more question. I, Sports fans will say India all the way or what else? <laughs> it's, I think it's going to rain. <laughs> I think there was one more question. Yeah. Thanks. 
Uh, hi everyone, I'm Karan. Uh, thank you for the session. Um, so my question is that when we talk about sport, the limelight still continues to be on traditional sports, cricket, badminton. What I want to ask is, what is your perspective on esports or on online gaming and the growth of this this sector when it comes to sport and advertising on sports? Yannick, it's for you. <laughs> And just, just to add one layer to it, especially when we look at the cut of younger audiences, right, yeah. 18 to 24, when we talk about those audiences, they're consuming a lot of eSport. Yeah. In fact, they're not consuming yeah. IPL as yeah. much as they're consuming eSport. Yeah. So what is your perspective on that? Yeah, so I think, you know, I, I, I think there's obviously a lot of consumption around in terms of streaming and playing participation on it. I think the key difference, right, and there's a fundamental difference between, let's not call it traditional sport, that's the fundamental difference between eSport and sport which is played in, in, as you said, traditionally, right, is that most sports consumption of traditional sport is about, is still about this gladiatorial environment of people playing in an offline environment with a stadium, with people, and what you see is a manifestation or representation of that on television, on your mobile and stuff. Esports is by the, by the way it's designed, is meant for people to consume on those screens. So I think there's a fundamental shift in that. And we, at, at least personally, at our fan code, the way we look at it is it's a completely different consumer habit. They're a different kind. A, a sports fan of cricket, tennis, football, kabaddi, basketball, they are similar kind of characteristics. And e-sports consumer, who may be the same, they may be overlaps, the way they consume the sport, the, the kind of, the way they play is, a, is essentially fundamentally completely different right now. There's a big difference, not completely different. I also have a point here that, you know, um, and metaverse is the buzzword, right? Uh, right? And nobody knows what's to be done uh, in such a, uh, with metaverse, but everybody's talking about it. But I think somewhere the gaming and uh, esports uh, is definitely one of the things that will be very relevant because imagine you can cre create your own avatars, watch, um, you know, metaverse matches going on. I don't know wh where it will go, but I think that there is some scope around uh, that, that uh, channel as well. Thank you. Sure, thanks. I, I, I think we have like run out of time. The screen's in red right now. Uh, Thank you so much.